Welcome back. In this video, I'll be looking at 2.3 conditional probabilities in Venn diagrams. 2.3 represents chapter 2, section 3 of the Pearson A level maths applied maths year 2 textbook. Now, the method that we're going to use for conditional probabilities in Venn diagrams is the reduced to sample space method. So, I'm going to start off this teaching video by going through this beautiful example. C and D are two events such that probability C is equal to 0.8, probability D is equal to 0.4, and probability C intersect D is equal to 0.25. Part A, draw a Venn diagram showing the probabilities for events C and D. Okay, so we need to draw a Venn diagram. Now the very first step, ladies and gents, is to draw a rectangle representing the sample space. So we have a rectangle representing the sample space. The notation that we use for the sample space is this notation over here. It looks like an E. The next step is to draw the event C and the event D inside the sample space. So here is event C and here is event D. Now when we fill in a Venn diagram we start off with the intersection between the events. So this intersection over here. Probability C intersect D is equal to 0.25, so I can label 0.25 over here. This part over here represents probability C only. Probability C only is calculated by taking probability C, which is 0.8, and subtracting 0.25. This gives us 0.55. In the same way, we can calculate probability D only. This is given by taking probability D, which is 0.4, and subtracting 0.25. This gives us 0.15. Now, the outside probability is calculated by taking 1 minus the sum of these probabilities. So 1 minus the sum of these probabilities gives us 0.05. So that there is my complete Venn diagram. Part B, part 1. Probability C union D. So that there is the whole of C and the whole of D, so 0 0.55 plus 0 0.25 plus 0 0.15. This gives us 0 0.95. Part 2, probability C given that the event D takes place. So what we do over here is we reduce the sample space to the event D. Okay. So what I'm going to do now is shading the event D. So the event D represents the sample space now. The probability will be out of 0 0.25 plus 0 0.15. Now for the event D, the part that represents the event C is this part over here, 0 0.25. So in the numerator, I can stick in 0 0.25. So if I calculate this, I get 0 0.625. Right, we're going to move on to part 3 now. But before I do part 3, I'm going to delete my shading. So I can rub this out. Okay, moving on to part 3. We want to find probability D given that the event C takes place. So the new sample space is the event C. So I can shade in the event C. The probability will be out of 0 0.55 plus 0 0.25. Now for the event C, the part that represents the event D, ladies and gents, is the 0 0.25. So if I calculate this, this gives me 0 0.3125. Okay, moving on to part 4. Now before I do part 4, I'm going to delete my shading so I can get rid of this part over here. So this is the shading in part 3. We're going to do part 4 now. So part 4, probability not D, given that the event not C takes place, so our sample space gets reduced to the event not C, so that's everything outside of C. So all of this part over here, that's everything outside of C. 
Okay, so our probability will be out of 0 0.15 plus 0 0.05. Now, from the not C, the part that represents not D will be the 0 0.05. So I can stick in the 0 0.05 in the numerator, so 0 0.05. Now, if I calculate this, I get 0 0.25. So that there is how you find conditional probabilities in Venn diagrams. You simply use reduce the sample space method. Here is another example. S and T are two events such that probability S is equal to 0 0.5 and probability T is equal to 0 0.7. Given that S and T are independent, which means that probability S intersect T is equal to probability S multiplied by probability T. This is 0 0.5 multiplied by 0 0.7, which gives us 0 0.35. Part A. Draw a Venn diagram showing the probabilities for events S and T. Okay, so we start off with the sample space which is represented by a rectangle. So here is my rectangle. The notation for the sample space is this notation which looks like an E. I can draw the event S inside the sample space and the event T inside the sample space. Now, I know that probability S intersect T is equal to 0 0.35, so I start off with the intersection, label it 0 0.35. Now, probability S only is calculated by taking probability S, which is 0 0.5, and subtracting 0 0.35. So 0 0.5 take away 0 0.35 gives us 0 0.15. Probability T only is calculated by taking probability T, which is 0 0.7, and subtracting 0 0.35. This gives us 0 0.35. The outside probability is calculated by taking 1 minus the sum of these probabilities. So 1 minus the sum of these probabilities gives us 0 0.15. Moving on to part B, find part 1, probability S intersect T. We've calculated this. It is 0 0.35. Part 2, probability S given that the event T takes place. So we need to reduce the sample space to the event T. I'm going to shade in the event T. There you have it. The probability will be out of 0 0.35 plus 0 0.35. Now for the event T, the part that represents the event S is the 0 0.35 here. So I can put the 0 0.35 in the numerator. So if I calculate this, this gives me 0 0.5. Part 3. If I quickly delete the shading so I can get rid of this part. Right, so in part 3, we want probability T given that the event not S takes place. So we're going to reduce the sample space to the event not S. That's everything outside of S. So I can shade everything outside of S. So the probability will be out of 0 0.35 plus 0 0.15. Now for the event not S, the part that represents the event T will be this part over here, 0 0.35. So I can put 0 0.35 in the numerator. If I calculate this, this gives me 0 0.7. Okay, right, so I'm going to quickly delete my shading. So I can get rid of my shading. Maths is beautiful, maths is juicy. Okay, <laughs> right, moving on to part four. Um, we want probability S given that the event not S, union, not T takes place. First of all, not S, union, not T is equivalent to writing S intersect T in brackets, the not of that. Okay, this is De Morgan's law. So I can rewrite this probability as the probability of S given that the event not S intersect T takes place. 
Okay, so um, our sample space gets reduced to the event not S intersect T, so that is everything outside the intersection of S and T. Okay, so our probability will be out of 0 0.15 plus 0 0.35 plus 0 0.15. So for the event not S intersect T, the part that represents S will be this part over here, 0.15. So in the numerator, I've got 0.15. Now if I calculate this, I get 3 over 13. And that there completes this particular example. Now if you found this video useful, please don't forget to subscribe.